was I'm Sick by Sick Brain off of her debut EP, Ashtray for Your Agony. And I'm so stoked to have Sick Brain here. What's up? What's up? Nothing. I'm just literally recovering from like putting the EP out and like celebrating like for the past few days. So, yeah. I love that. It's well deserved because over the last uh, year or so, you've been dropping so many incredible singles. You've had legendary features. Thank and you. And now it's your own body of work is out there in the whole wide world. Dude, it is. It's so crazy to like think about because I lit, like just started putting music out in 2020. So it's like, you know, it's so, so quick. It happened so quick. You're playing down in Dallas at Unsilent Night on Sunday, December 19th. And yes, I am. Of all the incredible artists on there. I'm sorry, every artist I've talked to already. Sorry, <laughs> grandson, when you hear this. Oh, my God. But I am most stoked to see your set. Thank just you. hands down, just <laughs> after seeing the videos from your EP release show at the Whiskey, it looked completely packed. For a Sunday night, you played at 11 p.m. And yeah. it doesn't look like it was possible to move at that venue. Yeah, I mean, it was, it was definitely crazy that it was like my first headline and people actually came like I was like oh my god there's a line outside because like I've played festivals and stuff and like obviously it makes sense that those are packed because like there's so many artists but um dude the fact that there was a line outside I was literally like tripping it's crazy, crazy. it's so well deserved too because thank you I mean you have a feature with Skrillex and Sway Lee before your first body of work comes out <laughs> like come on I, I'm i really lucky that was like the most random thing like I never thought like I would have a song with them it's, to be honest like it was so random like how that even came to be and then you have a legendary feature with Pussy Riot too dude yeah I love <laughs> Nadia she's the coolest person of all time that's awesome so now uh, developing yourself as sick brain as an artist I know you did stuff previously as sick brain but it wasn't an artist project per se yeah. so talk about um, going into it uh, what you were doing right before you decided okay this is time to go for it now it's my time it's my artist project and I'm putting this out into the world and I have one of the most intense screams of anyone <laughs> out there well um, I mean I was like modeling and I was writing and like I always wanted to do music but um to be honest, it's like I some something like happened, like one of my friends ended up like passing away at the beginning of 2020. Oh, I'm sorry. Like right no, it's all good, but it happened like right before the pandemic and it was just so crazy like how that made me feel like life is so temporary and so fragile and it's like oh my god, like what am I even doing? Like, I'm not, I wasn't happy like before and um, modeling like wasn't something that was like really fulfilling to me. Mm -hmm. I mean, writing was like, I, I was writing all the time, but um, I, I just like kind of felt like I wanted to do more and more and more. And like, I always had this feeling in the back of my head that I wanted to make music. And I was also like, I don't know, like if I could pull that off and, um, there were a couple instances where I was like listening to songs, like for example, like um, Ohio is for Lovers by Hawthorne Heights in the car, like with my ex-boyfriend who happened to do music. And um, I was like singing along and like screaming, like I was like so into it, just like messing around and like, um, yeah, I realized that I could scream. <laughs> and so I was like, oh, sick. So I guess this could happen. And then it's so crazy how it ended up like, I discovered that I could scream basically listening to that song and then I ended up remixing it with them. That's so that was insane. like insane. Like I I just don't understand like my life. Like I keep like awkwardly like randomly manifesting things by accident. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. And I, I was talking about this during the grandson interview too. It's like just getting to be around legends while becoming your own legend in that same right. And you're on that track in my eyes. I'm like, sick brain's a legend. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> it, not only could you scream, have an incredible scream, your voice is incredible too. Your singing Thank voice. You. So I was kind of telling you beforehand when we were trying to figure out which song off of ashtray for your agony, we wanted to play. Yeah. And I was like, there's six different artists out there. You show yeah. six different sides of sick brain, which I don't know <laughs> anyone else who's able to literally put out a debut EP and show six different sides of themselves and all of it just so cohesive and makes so much sense. Thank you so much. I was, I was actually really worried, um, putting it out that it wasn't going to be cohesive. Um, but it's just like, 
to be honest, I I put out like the EP with literally the fa- my favorite songs that I've made. And I was just like, that's what I want to do. Like, I don't care like if it's going to make sense or not. But like, these are my favorite songs that I've made. And like, that's what I'm going to do. And like, I don't know. I'm glad that you say that it's like cohesive and that like I'm getting that feedback because I was super worried about that. Yes, it is one incredible buffet of musical taste all in one. Thank and you. The thing that made the thing about the EP, which is weird about this EP for me, it's it was getting me excited trying to guess what's next. Yeah. Like as an interviewer, it was like, where does she go from here? Like which which one of these six is she gonna lie into or is she going into a seventh one? Yeah. And it's so funny. Also, something that's really admirable is you've put out so many incredible singles over the last year, and Thank these are you. all new songs that are on the EP, which yeah. is you don't see that very often. Yeah. Um, originally, like I was like, oh, like I'll just put out like an EP um and save these for like an album. Like I'll put out an EP with like the stuff that's already out and then just like save all of these for an album. And then I was like, you know what? No. Like, you know what? I'm just going to give everyone something new and hope for the best. <laughs> Hell yeah. And another thing that I admire about um, your artist project and how you do things is you keep things very much in the family. Like, it's the yeah. same crew, like, not the same crew all the time, but it's like yeah, of very similar crew. And you guys are all coming up together, which is really cool because it's awesome how on Maggie uh, Lindman's uh, debut record, you yeah. had a feature on it. And then you had Maggie as a feature on your debut. EP. Yeah. Well, I mean, I wouldn't have it any other way. She's like my best friend. And um, whenever we made Gaslight for her record, um, literally the next day we made Dopamine. And and we were trying to figure out like which of us took which song. <laughs> Draw names out of a hat. <laughs> yeah, literally. Um, yeah, and we have we have another one too. So Ooh. yeah, I mean, working with her is just incredible because like, She's literally my best friend. Like, we talk 24-7, and it's just, like, that's family. And, of course, I want to keep it, like, you know, is it, I feel, like, so comfortable doing stuff with my friends. Exactly. And you just see the authenticity behind it and everything. And yeah. now, for her Roxy show, was that the first time you ever performed live? Yeah. Holy yeah. shit. I mean, it was a live stream, so there there wasn't a, an audience. Yeah. But, of course, I was, like, kind of freaking out. You were You were playing to, like, 20,000 people yeah. just with no one in the audience. Like, I yeah. remember seeing that and going to Medford. I'm like, wait, was this really sick grade's first time on stage? Yeah. Insane. Yeah. And then, I mean, I, I played like a show at like, um, wh- where was I? I played a show at Emo Night, like a little set, like yeah. um, back in like August. And that was like my first, or maybe it was July. It was July or August, but that was my first time. And then literally after that, my first like big big like thing was like playing a festival and then it was like <laughs> oh my god like i can't believe this and like i've still only performed like less than 10 times and i just yeah. played on the same stage just like flipped on <laughs> and i'm Insane. just like it makes no sense to me <laughs> so now not only do you have the um the project out now ashtray for your agony everyone needs to check that out incredible debut ep Thank you're you. playing unsilent night december 19th down in dallas yeah. which is going to be insane you have some acting under your belt obviously you have modeling under your belt as well and the visuals for the music videos you're in not Thank only you. your own ones but the ones you're featured in it's like where you can't be stopped Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. So talk about um, the music videos and the visual aspect and how important it is to match it up perfectly with the song. Oh, my God. It's so important to me, to be honest. Like, when I make a song, like, pretty much immediately, I have, like, something in my head, like, that I'm seeing, you know? Like, for Hell Slide, for example, like, I made that song and then I was, like, driving home listening to it because... I feel like every artist, like, as soon as they make something, they put it on in the car, like, when they get the bounce. But I was, like, driving home, and I was like, dude, butterflies coming out of my arm. Like, I don't know why. I I was like, I just want it to be, like, in one room. I don't know. It's just, like, I just see these things, like, whenever I make songs. And, like, I have literally a music video in my head for every single song I've ever made. I love that. Thank you so much. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I'm also going to start directing like some of my friends' videos too. So Let's that's going to be that's going to be fun. I love that. That's yeah. going to be incredible. And 
just another thing to add to the resume at this point. Dude, yeah. So I'm just, crazy. I'm <laughs> just having fun, honestly. And, at this point. And now um, you're having fun. You're putting out incredible music, incredible visuals and everything. And we're in, we're in a world right now where pop punk's really coming back, very mm-hmm. prevalent. Like everyone's doing the crossover. It's really cool to see. Yeah. But you took it a step further. You went straight for heart. I, I yeah. would say hardcore, but it's not even the right term for it. Yeah, it's, I don't even know what it is, to be honest. I'm just kind of like making like a mishmash of like all the sounds that I like. <laughs> it, it's so clear to me that it's literally just sounds you like because... um. Yeah. I just want to say, like, just going through, it's like, okay, cool. This is a lane everyone else is in. And then you just, like, went 95 past everyone. You're like, yo, I'm going all or nothing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's definitely fun. I I, I love screaming. <laughs> <laughs> I do. It's like, it when I when I think of screams, I think of, like, yours, like, essentially, like, Ollie Sykes. Like, yeah. I was lucky enough to be next to him at Emo Night uh, while he was DJing. And yeah. him screaming into the mic, I heard him off the mic, literally in my ear. I'm like oh holy Dude. shit insane yeah and also so crazy because like i don't know what it is but tell me why people who literally <laughs> scream like i don't know if this is true for me but like everyone that i know who's like a screamer is like the nicest person and so time. soft-spoken <laughs> like, <laughs> and so soft-spoken <laughs> like literally all came to my house recently and got his eyelids tattooed i like low-key forced him to get his eyelids tattooed i was like bro like I'm getting a, fa- I got a face tattoo and I was like, you have to get your eyelids tattooed. And he was literally like, hmm, you really think so? Like, <laughs> I'm like, oh my God, you're, why are you so like sweet? Like, so I know who I'm not hanging I'm out like, with be after. crazy with me. <laughs> I don't know who I'm, I know who I'm not hanging out with after midnight at Dallas. <laughs> I'm going to come back with a giant tattoo. Dude. Tattoos are bigger in Texas across my head. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, that would be insane. <laughs> be like, oh. Did it for the culture. <laughs> Dude, yeah. I feel like I'm always, like, making my friends do funny shit. Like, um, I made Maggie, like, get her eyebrow pierced. And, it, like, I don't know. It's just so funny. Like, I love making people do funny shit. I love that. And so now, um, I know we dj together on Valentine's Day one year. Now, are you, yeah. an, do you actively DJ still? No, I, I just did that for, like, oh, a what moment. Off? Yeah, yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. And that's how I have met Sickbrit on yeah. Valentine's Day Dude, in West yeah. Hollywood. Yeah. Which is awesome. We got to Love do that, that together. And now we're going mm-hmm. down to Dallas for Unsilent Night. Once again, that is December 19th, yeah. Sunday. It's going to be absolutely incredible. It's the most stacked festival of the year. Yeah. By far. Easily. It's going to be insane. It's, I cannot wait. It's going to be so much fun. Yeah. And... I also can't wait to see you play there and to see what's coming in 2022 because I have a feeling it's going to be a lot bigger and better than we could imagine. (laughs) Dude, I think in January I have like two collabs coming out and I'm just like, what? Like, it makes no sense to me. (laughs) Like, whatever. Like, I'm just going with it. And I'm also like immediately, I think the day after my EP dropped, I literally like, me and my manager are like constantly texting 24-7. He's also like my best friend ever. And I was like, all right, so, album. Like, when can we put it out? Like, I'm like, <laughs> let's go. Like, I'm just constantly, like, want to do more and more. And then also, I have this weird, like, thing in my head where it's like, I just want to one-up the, like, last thing that I did. And I'm just like, oh, I want to do better and better. And I've also deleted, like, songs off my Spotify because I'm, like, that type of person. I'm like, I hate that now. I want it to be gone. <laughs> but the memory will live forever. Yeah, I need to, like, yeah. Just constantly, you know, get a little better and yeah, hopefully. Hell yeah. Well, yeah. I'm excited for that. Excited Thank for you. what's to come in 2022. Once again, congratulations on the debut. Thank EP. you so much. Once again, called Ashtray for your agony. Man, it's so good. And I want to play one more song off of that before you okay. get going. And also everyone needs to keep up with Sick Brain across social media. It's yeah. S-I-I-I. Yeah, three eyes. Brain. In there. Sick Brain. Well, yeah. there's a CK in there too. There is. Yeah. Yes. But three eyes, the most important part. Yeah. And three. Amazing. So, uh, what song off of Ashtray for Your Agony do you want me to play for everyone right now? Um, I kinda I kinda want you to play Fragile. Ooh. I love right. that one. I love it too. Here is Fragile by Sick Brain off of her debut EP, Ashtray for Your Agony. <laughs> 